Good evening, teacher. Hello, good evening. Welcome to the class. Okay, thank you, teacher. Okay, we're going to wait just a few minutes, waiting for the rest of the class to come. Okay. Good evening. Hello, good evening. Welcome to the class. Hello, good evening. Hello, good evening, Susan. How are you? Good. Some tired. Nice. Yeah, it's tired, right? But the good thing is that it's almost time to go to sleep. <laughs> okay, everybody, we're going to start the class of today. Of course, the first thing that we always do is to check the platform. So this is the class of today. That is not me, but anyways. And here is the question for today. So remember that we need to check into that one. And also there is a homework that we need to do, 2.8. So it's going to be, you just need to come and check what will be the, the best option for what is here. So it's going to be kind of easy. There are five questions here. And then there is the second part. So also, you just need to check if it's true or false. So there are 10 questions on this one. So by today, you have uh, to finish this one, 2.8, everything and to 2.8. Remember that for Friday, we need to finish the, well, for the weekend, let's say, we need to finish the midterm test. That is important, okay? Okay, so by now we are going to check the attendance, definitely. Okay, Ada Patricia Linares Galdames. Present teacher. Thank you. Adriana Stephanie Martinez Flores. Present. Good. Ana Selmi Chavez. Carmen Jasmine Lopez Martinez. Present. Good. Gloria Elizabeth Linares Galdames. Here. Guadalupe del Carmen Lopez Flores. Present teacher. Good. Jose Ernesto Osorio Morán. Carla Verónica Vázquez de Rivas. Present teacher. Good. Lourdes Beatriz Iraeta de Miranda. Present. Good. Ofelia Orellana Arce. Osmin Bayre Solorzano. Present teacher. Good evening. Good evening. Pamela Beatriz Posa de Reina. Good evening, present. Good evening. Rosa Elena Salgado de Serrano. Sandra Carolina Romero Ramírez. Present teacher. Good. Sandra Gladys Méndez Ramírez. Susana Carolina Hernández Iraeta. Present. Good. Walter Mauricio Morales Araujo. Wendy Patricia Molina Duarte. 
Present teacher. Present. Permítame un momentito. Uh, ok. Wilfredo Guardado Rivera. Present teacher. Good. Zulma Rosaura López García. Present. Good. Ricardo Alexis Fuentes Rodríguez. Ahorita. Flor de María Carballo Ugarte. Nelson Edgardo Sánchez Ramírez. Present teacher. Good. Ana Michelle Guevara Sánchez. Mayra Melanie Guevara de Beltrán. Perfect. So, we are going to... Here, teacher Ophelia. Oh, Ophelia, hello, how are you? Very thank you, teacher. Nice, welcome to the class. Teacher here, welcome. Oh. Okay, perfect. Yes, I said you. Okay, yeah. thank you, thank you. Perfect, good. Okay, so we are going to start the class of today. So um, we're going to check about, let me just hold here. Okay, so the class of today is uh, identify delivery issues when online shopping. Well, we're going to speak a little bit more than only the delivery. So shopping online, common problems faced by the customers. We know that we're talking about e-commerce and many things that are related for that one. So um, I'm going to start reading for you. So it says shopping online is now very popular. Along with the development of e-commerce, the customer's demand of online shopping has created online shopping trends. Also, the forms of online shopping are becoming more and more diverse. There are problems that customers have to face with. So first question is, what is, what is that word? Although, no, let me just check. Oh, that was one word. Oh, I don't get it. Uh, trends, what is a trend? Do you remember? Like the moment, this time, how do you say, moda? Fashion. <laughs> Fashion, okay. Yeah, a trend is like a behavior, right? That something has, in this case, the market. So online shopping is like very, very popular here. Okay, we're gonna start reading then. So Osmi, could you please start? It's okay, teacher. It doesn't matter. Okay. Of course. You, you look more young. Okay. Yeah, he's you very young, that. you know. Nice, yes. right? <laughs> yes. Okay, teacher. Okay. It doesn't matter. It's, um, it's on, on, online. Store has good description. However, it's product five content only. Writer. Written. Writer. Text. Poor uh, quali quality Im imagine or impresses a specification that consume uh, may wonder about the quality is product when they when they do shopping online details make all the difference. So it's important to take care of your product file. Very good, very well. So this is just an introduction of what we're going to read. So uh, it says if it doesn't matter if an online store has good description. However, if product files contain poorly written text, poor quality images, or imprecise specification, the consumer may wonder about the quality of product. So that happens when you go to a website and you see that the website is not that good, right? The pictures are not good, or the description is missing, or the pricing is not there. Mm, you start wonder, um, is this going to be good? Uh, so the first impression is very important at this point. So this is the first problem that we can face as customers, poor logistic and long delivery. We have discussed that before, but let's check about this one. Walter, Mauricio, could you please read this one? Okay. And poor logistic 
and low delivery. Uh, one predicament that constantly tours uh, with us shopping online while, is when while, while shopping. While shopping online is when the orders are delivered. And although most of our commerce in city had all the uh, size had ordered a tracking system for the customer. They, they aren't and always acquire a, a, cheaper, a, price, a cheaper and often tour of the customer. A home when they are at work or, or uh, somewhere and there is not why to fix a particular time. A lot for delivery to take a place. This some problem and exits and while returning products. Another problem is that people are living in rural areas are unable to shop online because not all heat commerce and city provide delivery Thank service type. Thai provide delivery service to their uh, location. Very good. What did you understand on this one, Walter? Okay. And and delivery a uh, uh, a tie the the receipt and and I take a place or so in homes. Okay, very well. So actually, this is a problem because many things might be happening. As we checked in the last module about logistics, tracking system of packages is very important, but it's not always accurate, right? So. Sometimes it's not exactly what it says. The other problem is that sometimes the package is delivered when we are at work or out. We don't have a notification. So in five minutes, in 10 minutes, in 20 minutes, the package will arrive. So in the US, you know, sometimes it's common that some people kill packages. So that is not that good, definitely. Okay. And uh, that happens also when returning packages. Uh, let me see if there is any word here. Accurate, do you remember what is accurate? It's like uh, exactly. Very yes. good. Good, perfect. That is like something that is exact, right? It's accurate. And the, the other one is going to be inaccurate. Very good. Uh, let's see. Well, Lupe, could you please read this part? Uh, long delivery? Yeah, please. Long delivery time is also a serious problem for B2C trade. Uh, Altro in business to business, it can be offset by the price or volume. Volume. Volume of products. Why certain e-commerce offers some day delivery, most true, and delivers in two, in two, three days. Consumer don't, don't like waiting when shopping online. Very good. What did you understand on this one? <clears throat> and when uh, when I buy the, the, the product online, I, I wait the uh, is the uh, entrega delivery, delivery. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. is uh, quickly 
is the people don't like wait for uh, more time or much time. Very good, actually, that is it. So nobody wants to wait for the product that you purchase, right? So it's going to be something that you really, you really want to, to avoid. Perfect. So B2C, do you remember what is B2C? Uh -huh. Let's see if you paid attention. Business to commerce. Business to commerce, very good. That is it, B2C. And what is to be stuck? Like inventory? When you get truck, truck, mm. truck it. Mm -hmm. mm. Oh my God. The stock is when you are in, in the traffic, in the traffic, and yeah. the traffic, yeah. the traffic, it doesn't move. Uh, move and you're stuck. Very good. That is stuck. And it's very similar to the other one. The, well, the, the other stock. one is stuck. Stuck is with O, and that is the inventory. Thing. And this one is stuck that is going to be uh, like an action or when, when you are not able to move even back or, or forth. So you are stuck. Sometimes there we is, are stuck in moments, right? Uh -huh. there, is a, there is a famous song, Stuck on You. Ah, I yeah. Know. Yeah, yeah. I Stuck on You. Very well. <laughs> yeah, I remember. <laughs> okay, we need to sing a song here. Yeah. Okay. Same <laughs> like Bono said. Exactly. Stuck in a moment, right? Very good. Okay, so the other one, a poor searching engine, that is going to be for Carla Vasquez. Poor searching engine. Customer choose shopping online because there is also to avoid waiting or queuing? Queuing. Queuing when shopping in a store. So there are not reasons for them to keep waiting when shopping online just because they website love slowly and has poor searching engine. Most customers search for several minutes in a category before selecting one or more products for purchase. This navigation is not as smooth they will, will end, end up getting tired and leaving the sites, leaving behind an abandoned shopping cart. This is one of the problems faced by e-commerce consumers when shopping online. Good, what did you understand in this one? It's very important that all company have her his business, her his e-commerce uh, invest in a Good, yeah, good, it um, ser servers. Okay, yes, yeah, servers actually. Yeah. Yes, the servers because all customers have a good experience when search for a product. Uh, the customer um, want to want to phone a. Uh, from a product in a, in a less second possible uh, that had to uh, um, uh, a website uh, out, update of the website and uh, in a good uh, website service because it's very important for e-commerce that service online uh, will be a uh, express search. Very good, perfect. Actually, that is true. I mean, you need to invest in a very good website with a very good uh, searching engine. So the customers, they click and opens a new window immediately and you read and see all the pictures. But if you click and you're waiting, uh, you are like, oh my goodness, I'm gonna go to other place, I don't know. So that is important. Let's check some words. Uh, what is poor? Oh, poor baby, they say. Poor um, is a less, like a less. Okay, like less, like 
Well, this has many ways of usage, right? So poor is the opposite of rich. In this oh, case, yes. in this case, speaking about technology, poor is something that it doesn't have the resources, right? Let's see what is also uh, smooth. Softly. Softly, nice, right? Nice. Like when you are nice. driving and you break smoothly. Mm. Right, that's nice, very good. Okay, the other one says inflexible return policy. This is for Rose. Okay, <clears throat> the product sheets must contain a link to the return policies. If they are better than the competition, highlighting them can be a great idea. Immediate return without commitment, for example. In any case, return police policies cannot be impressive. The customer shopping online needs to know what to do if a product does not have the quality he expected. If the commerce is not able to satisfy Satisfactorily answer questions like, "How will you recover? How will you recover your money? How will take care of the recovery of the item, etc." Probably the purchase decision will never occur. The result will be an abandoned cart, at best, and a rebound most of the time. Good. What did you understand on this one? My God, inflexible return policy. Maybe the, the policies to return the product are, are not flexible <laughs> and are so, oh my God, strict, I don't know. Yeah, that is it. Sometimes yeah. it's, it's not that the policy, uh, in my opinion, is not that the policy is flexible or inflexible. Sometimes we don't have the information, right? So it says returns um, available, but you don't know what you need to do. Uh, am I going to pay for the return? Am I going to print the label? Many um, times, many times sites have policies. And, and when you get into the, the the site and they say, read the policies agreement. Oh my God, there are. <laughs> and I, for in my case, I only put agree. <laughs> and I don't know all the policies, but it's important to read the, the small letter, <laughs> like in a contract, because there, there will be a, a policy. You can't recover your money. <laughs> And then I, I, I need my money, but in the policies, it's clearly you don't have, you don't, we don't re return your money. That is very true. Sometimes that happens that so there is a link for you to read the policy, terms and conditions, something like that. And when you click on that one, a lot of information and you are like, my goodness, I just want a pair of shoes, right? So I'm going to just to click yes, but that is not the way it should be because every company is different, right? Sometimes, I mean, sometimes you cannot do anything. For example, if you are using Gmail and they change the terms and condition, if you say, no, I don't agree, you can use the email. So sometimes it's like, well, what can I do, right? But in this kind of situation, for example, if you are going to go to a bank and sign a contract, oh my goodness, you need to read that one. So many people, for example, they don't know that if you get a loan uh, for a bank for your house, the bank, all the banks in El Salvador, that is part of the policy that it says that they can change the amount of payment and the percentage of interest at any time in the way that they like. So if they come to your house and they say, uh, okay, you paid $200 and now you're going to pay $400 and you say, no, why? You signed the contract. What can you do, right? So it's kind of teacher in the El Salvador, the customer serving in a bank is bad service, poor service. That is true. But you know what happens sometimes is the problem is that the people that is there in front, uh, uh, in the front line, they don't know the information and almost nobody looks for information. The most of the people, they want information about loans, about 
products and services. But if you go and ask specific questions, how to do something, they, they are not trained. So it's not their fault. Sometimes if you face a good person there in front, they call or they try to research for the information. But some of the time they say, I don't know and whatever, right? So it's a big problem. The problem is the people, uh, sometimes they are not well trained. And uh, well, if you don't have the information, it's very difficult to provide the answers to the public, right? Good, good. Uh, let me see if there is any other. I don't think so. Oh, 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 oh. No, Paul. So the next one is going to be for Susanna. Hi. Hello, Susanna. Could you please read quality? Okay. Quality of product is not expected when shopping online. The quality of a product cannot be known until the customer examines it with hands. It does not present difficult, difficult in traditional retailers, but that is not the case with e-commerce store. Most consumers are used to this difficult and therefore expecting to find certain guarantees when shopping online. Good, what did you understand on this one? I think we moved. We moved. Um, we moved expecting the, the article we are shopping is good. We trust in the words and the offer like a story. I think that. Okay, very and good. And we need, uh, and we need for reference the product. Yeah, that is true. Actually, this is something that we we said at the beginning, right? When we started speaking about e-commerce, that sometimes it's difficult just to see a picture because you are not sure if it's exactly what you want, if it, if the fabric is going to be fine, if it's going to be soft, if the color is exactly as the picture. So do you remember that some of you say that you prefer to go to the physical store instead of shopping online? Because of this, sometimes you expect something and when you receive the product, uh, it's not what you expected. So that is definitely not, not good. Okay, there are no words here for, for us to check. So boring interfaces, this is for Jasmine. Boring interfaces, while overwhelming site structures can be a boomer. Website with insipid interface don't get much done either. It's hard to get the attention of the customers, so make sure you get it right of the first go. Shoppers are an impatient lot. Get their attention with attractive website things that allure visitors and give them an enjoyable experience, both of desktops and other handheld devices like mobile tabs. EDC. Possible solution. Make sure your web page don't take too long to land. Give interesting products, gifts to keep Pistar entertaining and engage at the same time. Good. What did you understand of this one? I understand that sometimes the website is not um, attractive for customer and they can go to boring easily of the first time. And if the website is boring, the customer will not buy. But if the website has um, maybe an announcement or an advertisement that takes your attention, maybe you will read and try to know about what the website and how to work and if that will be a good deal to buy here. Very good, perfect, very nice. That is true, I mean, sometimes the websites are boring, right? It, it means that, I mean, when you're shopping, 
that is something that entertains you, right? It's like when you go to a store and you look a lot of things and you walk and everything is fine. So the same happens with the website sometimes. I mean, it's not, not only that they are slow, but sometimes, I don't know, everything is white. And I don't know, the pictures are not good. It's not, it's not funny, okay? So let's check some words. Overwhelming, what is overwhelming? Okay, overwhelming is something like shocked. When something happens and you don't know what to do, what am I gonna do right now? You are like shocked, you are like, I don't have words. I don't know what to do. That is overwhelming. So it says, while well, overwhelming structures can be a bummer, a bummer in this case is like something complicated. Something is not, it's not easy to do, okay? And you, you are disappointed about that one. Insipid, you know what is insipid, right? What is insipid? Without color, slice. Very good. <laughs> Without color, not attractive. That is it. Insipid is like, in the food, we say that insipid is when it doesn't have any salt or condiments, right? The water so, is insipid. Yeah, so yeah. that is it. Insipid is also uh, an adjective that you can have. I'm sorry? Mm -hmm. Okay, interfaces, what is an interface? It's the process of information, the one system to other system teacher. Very or good. Other face to other face in the same system too. Very good. So that is it. It's like the transition in the website when you click and you go to the next website, I mean, to the next window, and sometimes it's not that good. So that is an interface. An interface is from move from one to another place. Uh, it's like a connection, right? Uh, let's see what else. Uh, there were some here. Let me see. Allure. Do you know what is allure? <gasps> Yes, uh, in fact, there is a, a perfume. Mm -hmm. It's like a seduction. Okay, that is yeah. it. That's, <laughs> I have never tried ah, that yes. one. The, the signs have to att be attractive and your, your eyes have to be in love with the sight. Oh, that's nice. I like it. <laughs> Very good. So allure is to impact in a mysterious way, the, the customer, the visitors, to attract them, right? So that is it. very good. Uh, let's see what else, uh, Marvel. Uh, I don't think there is any other. Good. So the other one says insecurity for the customers when shopping online. This is for Anna Chavez, Anna Salmi Chavez. Teacher, I'm sorry, I Okay, no worries. Be careful there. Thank you, teacher. Okay, Wilfredo, could you please help us with this? Yes, teacher. Uh, investment? Insecurity. Uh, yeah, uh, actually, it's okay. the topic is this, but you can continue. Okay. And security for the customers when shopping online. Investment in cybersecurity is growing years on years due to the increasing number of, of threats to government, companies and business internationally, e-commerce, e-commerce sites record important customer data, like name, phone, number, address, and bank details. If these sites don't Im implement stringent, stringent. stringent cybersecurity measure, your data is at risk, risk of falling into the group hand. Who can the wreak havoc mm -hmm. 
on your bank account. Most of the big player players in online shopping centrally have the best in class security measures to protect their customers detail. But the same can be said about the countless smaller size who may to have the expertise to do so. Very well. And what did you understand on this one? I guess that the company has to have to implement some some <coughs> system to, um, for example, to protect the the customer because many many people could be a hacker hacker uh, your accounts when they some get some business online. Then I guess that that's why many companies have to to invest about cybersecurity. Definitely. And when shopping example, online, go ahead. I'm sorry. Yes, I, I don't know if you have you hear about phishing. Yeah, phishing. Yeah. Yes. Many, for example, in my company, um, every month we have to complete a cybersecurity training. How we can do to to know about about some malicious? No, I don't know if the right word yeah, malicious, malicious email. Yeah. yeah. Then we have to be ready because sometimes uh, hackers may this this fraud to get information about any company. Very true, definitely. So, and uh, yeah, this is something that nowadays is very common. We need to be careful. And when you shop online, it's even more because remember that you enter your credit card information or your credentials about something. And then, of course, it's going to, it may cause a big problem if that is hacked, definitely. Okay. So let's check some words. Investment, do you remember what is investment? I, I remember that it is when you like a uh, inversion. In or, English. Um, let me see. I don't remember what kind of word is like a uh, investment. Okay, but that is good. I mean, investment is like uh, well, that is improvement, but investment um, is to to put some money in a business, right? In this case, to put money in cybersecurity because it's important to put money there. Good. Um, okay. Let's see, everybody. What is threat? What is a threat? Like a danger. Danger, very good, like a menace, right? Something that is menacing yes. your company, your information, anything. Viruses are big threats. I remember that I, I, I was teaching in a university once and there was a virus there where if you put the, uh, the USB memory into the computer, in 15 minutes, the USB memory was burned, was broken. So that was very powerful. Let's see what else. There are some words here. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Uh, stringent is like in Spanish, right? Something that shall be strong, uh, something that is very, very strong. And let's see. Okay, these two words are very similar. Wreck. A wreck, in this case, is used as a metaphor. A wreck is when you are in a, in a boat and then the boat breaks and goes to the deep ocean, like Titanic. The Titanic had a rake in, in the ocean. And havoc, well, this is a word that is not that common used. Havoc is something like destruction. What is left after the destruction, okay? So um, it says here that if uh, somebody gets, or, or if your information gets into the wrong hands, it can then have, destructions in the bank account. You can clear everything in your bank account. So that is not good, right? There was another one as I remember, let me see. Uh, no, there is no other. Okay, the other one says lack of payment options. 
this one is going to be for Adrian. Okay. Is is another lack of payment options? Yeah, yeah. This is another common problem when shopping online. A lot of times, consumers do not do not know how to how to make the payment if if the debit cards they use are not available as an op option. Customers are also often stuck. A stuck, stuck with stuck. A stuck with the payment option when cash on delivery is not available. With online fraud picking up stem, most customers prefer paying cash on delivery as they are skeptical about sharing their car details. Details. This is a common complaint by many customers these days. They not have many payment methods that they can use and trust. Trust, trust. very good. Trust. And what did you understand on this one, Adrian? Um, maybe um, um, sometimes a uh, commerce and uh, lack and uh, uh, different uh, payment options. Is it is a problem with a uh, customer because the different uh, sales is is very important and have a different method or options and for pay. Mm, uh, uh, today, well, today with con with the sales online is very important a uh, pay online uh, and is is very easy is very um, mm -hmm. uh, but is very important the security the the payment online and the and the last point is is the mention the, the security and the, this option mm -hmm. very good perfect that is actually exactly what it says i mean uh, sometimes I, we know that it's dangerous. So sometimes we need different ways of payment methods. Uh, it might be a transfer. It might be a bank account. It might be PayPal. There are many ways for you to pay nowadays. But sometimes some com co some companies they do not have options. So and then even if you want to purchase, sometimes you say, okay, I don't have a credit card, so goodbye. So causes impact in the business. Nonsensical requirement to complete the purchase. This one is for Wendy Molina. Okay, I'm, I'm sorry. Oh, go ahead. Uh, according to study, three or the ten of ten online consumer, uh, thirty-four percent. Maybe it's correct. Yep. Okay, I want. Abandon their shopping cart when they are forced to create an account. This is just one of many requirements that should not be imposed on first time shopping on like customer. Amazon, for example, report to advantage of re registering on this platform, on its platform, but in no case imposes registration on its customer. Good, what well, did you understand on this one? Maybe um, when you uh, need uh, read, for example, one article or you need to uh, enter the page or website or I don't know, uh, the, the page, uh, Pay you uh, uh no is uh, no. need you no. you create an account you create a account and the people don't like creating an account because we don't have time maybe not time for example when you you need read uh one article 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 uh, um, 
the, the website is to uh, uh, force the, the creator account. In, in my case, I don't like because I only, I only, uh, I, how do you say, teacher? Solo quiero. Or, I just want. I just want only read the article, only that. Don't, don't, no more. And maybe it's the reason the people uh, say goodbye to the website. Actually, that is very true. I mean, uh, that happens to me as well. One of the biggest problems that you have when you create an account is that they are starting sending you emails, a lot of emails. Yes. There. You don't care. I mean, you delete without opening. So it's a big problem because you believe that that is going to happen. So yeah, uh, if you are going to purchase something, you don't have to create an account un unless it's very necessary for your own security or for you to download anything. But if it's just a purchase, you just click, enter your information, and that's it, right? In, in other case, too, uh, you need uh, send to, to, to date the credit card too. Uh, sometimes say it's free, but you you need uh, enter the, the number, the credit card for uh, and say you can go out when you you decide, but uh, it's important you, you uh, uh, I don't know, uh, send the number, the credit card. That is also very common, that, that is true. I mean, it says it's for free, you can try it and whatever, but whenever for you- one month, say, uh -huh. one, one month. <laughs> but you, when you really want to try it, there is the option. Enter the credit card. If not, you are not able to chase. So that is not good, definitely. You don't want to enter your information. Very good, perfect, Wendy. So let's check some vocabulary. Nonsensical, what is that? I don't know, teacher. Nonsense. Okay, nonsensical, it means that it doesn't make sense. It's like when you say, why? Why do you want this? I don't know. Why do you need this from me? I mean, it doesn't make any sense. It's like, mm, I, I, don't, I don't get it. I don't understand. So that is nonsensical. Good. The other one, it says poor customer service. This is for Sandra Romero. Hello. Not possible. Pamela, could you please help us with poor customer service? Yeah, poor customer service. This is the main problem customer face when shopping online, when they want to ask more information about the product to the seller, they get too slow replay. Situation is similar for customers who have purchased and are having questions and problems with the product. Very good. What did you understand on this one? Oh, uh, well, uh, sometimes it's it's a kind of difficult to buy something in on on, on, on website because. If you need more information, or if you need a little help about the, the product that you want, the customer service is replying, no, it's not immediately, or it's the taking more time than you want. So that's kind of a problem we we have. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I mean, whenever, well, I believe that everybody has experience with Claro or Tigo or whatever, any company um, that you go and you need help and you need to wait 30 minutes or one hour and then you go to the desk and they say, oh, that is not possible. Oh, yes, I'm sorry, we have some problems with the sign up and we're going to help, I mean, we're going to fix that person. I mean, or you, they don't have information, the information that you're looking to get. So. 
that is something that makes you go away from the company or not purchasing or do any other thing. Uh, let me see. In the case, teacher, when the process is, is very automatical and you need um, a specific support, but you need to, to access the third phase, the second phase, the three phase, and the attention is not good for the clients. The service is not good. That is very true. So, yeah, sometimes, you know, online happens a lot that there is there are chatbots where you chat and it's automatic and they're answering in automatic and you say, no, that's not what I want. So, All the options. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and, and at the end, yours. I mean, even at the end, they say, was this helpful? And you are like, of course not. <laughs> so that happens. So the last part of this is going to be for uh, Sulma. Okay, some online retailers may also face this because their technology is restricting, restricting them or they have hired their own partners, agencies to help them manage their project. Retailers who want to achieve growth must be built or good technology. They have a choose the right shopping cart solution inventory management software, email software, CRM system, analytics, and more. Good, what did you understand on this one? Mm -hmm. I think the companies need to include the technology in your process. Uh, but they they need to choose the right technology for your business. Sometimes, uh, sometimes, uh, algunas. How do you say? Some. Some uh, system is not a uh, friendly with the customer or with, the, with your employees, then uh, it's difficult to use or is difficult to understand. Very good, that is true. I mean, sometimes it's not the company itself, the one that has problems, but sometimes they hire a third party company to create the software or the website or the support. And that company is not very good. So that is a big problem. Okay. Uh, the last part is going to be for Lourdes. Okay. The bottom line. Yeah, please. Online shopping is growing fast in the world, and that means e-commerce is quickly becoming a necessity. A necessity. Necessity. For necessity uh, for for retailers and even many b2b companies the good news is it's never been easier for smaller companies to get into e-commerce and reap the the many benefits continue yes please okay if you've been dreaming about testing the e-commerce waiters, check out our Magento development packages. Packages. At packages. At Magia Solution, we deliver full suite of services for your Magento power business. From consulting e-commerce, a strategy to website development service services, no matter what your needs are. Magia Solution will all provide you the, the most effective solution to help your business go live quickly and effectively. Let's talk to our expert for free consulting. Very good. So this is like the, the ending, right? So 
uh, online shopping is very important. We need to be careful on the way that we're going to do businesses. So we and the co customers are happy. And of course, there's like the little commercial about the company that actually works in that one. They work in that kind of designing of products. So you can see that, that there are many companies that can help you in your business if you want to, to go for it. Okay. So we are going to stop for a while and we're going to check the attendance. One hour already, my time flies. Ada Patricia Linares Galdames. Adriana Stephanie Martinez Flores. Present. Good. Ana Selmi Chavez. Present teacher. Good. Carmen Jasmine Lopez Martinez. Present. Good. Gloria Elizabeth Linares Galdames. Here. Good. Guadalupe del Carmen Lopez Flores. Present teacher. Good. Jose Ernesto Osorio Morán. Present teacher. Good. Carla Verónica Vázquez de Rivas. Present teacher. Good. Lourdes Beatriz Iraeta de Miranda. I'm here. Good. Ofelia Orellana Arce. Here teacher. Good. Osmin Baire Solorzano. Present teacher. Good. Pamela Beatriz Posada Reina. Rosa Elena Salgado de Serrano. Present. Okay. Present teacher. Okay. Sandra Carolina Romero Ramirez. Here, teacher. Good. Sandra Gladys Méndez Ramirez. Susana Carolina Hernández Iraeta. Present. Good. Walter Mauricio Morales Araujo. Present. Good. Wendy Patricia Molina Duarte. Present. Good. Wilfredo Guardado Rivera. Present, teacher. Good. Zulma Rosaura López García. Present. Good. Ricardo Alexis Fuentes Rodríguez. Hello, teacher. Present. Good. Flor de María Carballo Ugarte. Present. Good. Nelson Edgardo Sánchez Ramírez. Present, teacher. Good. Ana Michelle Guevara Sánchez. Present. Good. Mayra Melanie Guevara de Beltrán. Present. Good, perfect. Okay, my friends, we're going to continue and now we're gonna see some videos. Let me check which one is the first one. Not this one, but this one. Okay, so uh, let's check about this video. Remember that as usual, we're going to listen and then provide feedback on what you understood, any opinion or anything like that. Okay, here we go. <clears throat> We came up with a lot of bad names before we came yeah, up with the idea really for ones. of a kind. And it spoke to this idea that we specialize in limited edition goods, so everything is 10 of a kind, 20 of a kind, 50 of a kind. And we are big into a double meaning. Yeah, uh, yeah. we yeah. love a pun. Yeah. I'm Erica Cerullo. And I'm Claire Mazur, and we're the co-founders of Of Kind. There is a movement happening in this country, and we like to call it the maker movement. People want to buy things from people more than they want to buy them from just sort of nameless brands. At Of A Kind, we specialize in selling limited edition exclusive pieces from emerging designers. How are you? Good. So Hi. Good to see you. How are you? Beyond just posting products on our site, we actually write content about them that tells you a lot about their lives and a lot about the inspiration and the things that fuel them. <laughs> so good. We think there's something really important in knowing the story behind the things you buy. We think people want a sense of where their things are coming from. And getting a sense of knowing that designer through the storytelling that we do, we think really enhances the shopping experience. This sold really well. Like it just, yeah. like every week yeah. someone's buying one of those. It's less about consumption and it's more of an emotional transaction. This is a bookend by a designer called Wolfham. This jacket is by a designer, Lindsay Butler of Veda, who we've worked with for a very long time. We know that once you get it, that you're gonna love it and you're gonna keep going back to that designer and buying more pieces. So Eric and I have been friends now for going on like 13 years or something like that. We met my freshman year in college and one of the sort of common bonds between us has been an interest in fashion, but not just sort of like fashion with a capital F, but that 
It's sort of that thrill of discovery that comes from scouring boutiques. And when we came up with this idea that we could create a business that would support those same designers who we had been so eager to discover ourselves as consumers, we were really excited about it. We came up with the idea in January of 2010 and then, you know, we quit our jobs in August and launched the site in November and it was just really finding people who were passionate about us and what we were doing that, that got it going. I think one of the most fulfilling things about our relationship and our partnership is just knowing that you can be completely honest with someone. It is so great to have a friend to celebrate the successes with. It's, I think, even more important to have a friend through the hard times. E-commerce in general can be a really impersonal shopping experience. You know, you're sitting alone at your computer and you don't really connect on a human level. And that's something that we're really trying to build into what we're doing with Avakind. We do a customer survey every year and one of the nicest comments that we got is someone saying, of a kind feels like my favorite boutique that just happens to be on the internet. And I think that that's exactly what we're going for, this feeling that it is that human connection and that you are interacting with us in that way. It's very authentic. It's Claire and Erica. It's not just an impersonal site. And we think it's important that our audience connects with us on a sort of human level. One of the amazing things about this sort of, this era of the internet is that you can be Amazon, you can also be a site like of a kind and have this really personal touch. Getting to execute your own vision and really feel proud of what you're putting out is an incredibly satisfying and I think rare thing. We can look at what we've built and look at of a kind and say, you know, I see my fingerprints all over that. That is so hugely satisfying to us to think that this thing that we built out to do is actually doing what we intended exactly what for, hoped. yeah, exactly what we'd hoped. Very clear. Okay, what did you get into this one? It's about the experience of the two friends for begin um, a store um, related to the the fashion clothes. Okay. And in the experience related to the the e-commerce a model in, in their business um, for, for them, uh, they express that the experience is excited. And the other information, it was for the relationship uh, between and that they are friends. Very good. So yeah, they are very close friends and they launched this online boutique, right? So it's kind of interesting. Any other common or any other opinion? I'm sorry. They speak very fast, but like Anna Selmy said, they have a uh, they have an online store with designer clothes. And I understand that at the end, they mentioned that something that um, you need or the people need to have a, a personal touch. I understand. <laughs> but in all the, in, in a few words, they are, they are friends and they, uh, they put the online store with the designer clothes. Very good, perfect. Actually, that is it. And the personal touch that they talk about is because they they present the story of the designer or the clothes. So they know what happens, where were they feeling when they were designing the clothes. So it's very interesting that part, actually. Um, and you are very true. They speak very fast. So whenever <laughs> you go to other country, not always, but you are going to find yeah. people like that, that they are going to speak very fast. So this is a good exercise that you can do yourself. If you want to start improving the listening, 
you can watch videos like this first with no subtitles and then with English subtitles. I mean, with one video of four minutes, you can spend all the afternoon if you want checking about vocabulary, pronunciation. This video was very good because of that, because you can see when they are speaking and you can see how they pronounce the, the words, right? So that is a very good thing. Any other opinion? No others. Okay, so there is another video about shopping online. Of course, we're gonna see and then discuss. I hope this is easier to understand. So let's see how it goes. Do you get a buzz out of buying something? A little tingle of excitement. It feels good, doesn't it? That's your brain producing dopamine. It's the same rush you get from chocolate or sex. During lockdown, people were increasingly forced to rely on the internet to get their retail dopamine hits. In fact, over $4 trillion was spent buying stuff online in 2020, almost a third more than the year before. Shopping is going through a radical shift right now, and the pandemic has sped it up. Retailers have been forced to adapt and innovate. Driving this revolution? You. Or to be more specific, your data. Here's how. If you went shopping in the 16th century, you'd get personalised service. So, for example, if you wanted to buy your suit of armour, you would go to an armourer who would knock it up to your specifications. But bespoke services came with a premium price tag. Then came the Industrial Revolution, with its big factories, assembly lines and automation. Mass production made goods cheaper, but a lot less personalised. And distribution was tricky. Products had to be taken from factories to what was essentially a small warehouse near where the customers lived. Basically, a shop. The only way you could buy was through these shops. Uh, and you had very little choice, actually. You had very few shops near you. And if you wanted something, you had to go. And your choice was between one of those shops. Fast forward to the advent of superstores and out-of-town malls. And these choices grew but everything changed when the internet came along. Suddenly the shopper has more choice than ever and it's really up to the producer and the retailer to offer the consumer what they want when they want it. With more choice came more power for the consumer. 30 years ago, we in the brands used to define the brand ourselves and the product. Glossy ads like these have pushed products to consumers for decades. And the consumers used to, like so many Pavlov's dogs, they used to come and buy. But the internet has put consumers in the driving seat, calling the shots on what's cool and what's not through reviews, social media posts and influencers. Leading the way in this retail revolution is China. This is Gu Tian. She's a huge live streaming star. And now I have 1.8 million followers on Reddit, and they are just like my best friend. But unlike live streaming in the West, which is used mostly for entertainment or gaming, Gu Tian vlogs to vlog, selling thousands of beauty products to her 1.8 million social media followers. She's one of thousands of influencers, also known as key opinion leaders. Oh my God! Selling anything from lipsticks to food and even plants. Live streaming selling has helped to make China the world leader in e-commerce. It's forecast that in 2021, half of everything bought in China will be bought online. For Gen Z and Millennial, like me, most of them prefer shopping online than going to a physical store because of larger range of choices and lower price. The Chinese internet market is uh, very, very highly developed. The scale of the market is over $2 trillion worth of, of consumption online. They have something called Singles Day, where they do, they do billions of dollars worth of transactions in an hour. Three huge companies dominate 
Alibaba, JD.com, and Pindodo, which combined account for almost 80% of the market. The other thing about the Chinese market that's very interesting is that whereas we have like Google in search and we have Facebook in social media, Amazon in e-commerce and PayPal in payments, they've put it all together in single organizations. So they have entire ecosystems and many Chinese consumers live their entire lives in those ecosystems. These super app ecosystems give the retailers intimate knowledge of exactly what their users like, want and buy. And of course, all of this requires a huge amount of data and the Chinese are much more willing at this point to allow uh, data tracking of everything that they do than many people are in the West. With more direct insight into customer demands, retailers can maximize their margins and cut waste. Some Chinese tech firms are even using people's digital footprint to influence the way goods are produced, known as consumer to manufacturer. That's really cutting out even the brands from the purpose. So the factories then start dealing directly with consumers and of course can be flexing their production capacity uh, directly depending on, on the consumer demand. Western retailers are playing catch up. For years, they rested on their laurels regarding the internet as secondary to the store. Not help perhaps, by the fact that they had sunk a lot of money into store space. America, for example, has 2.2 square metres of retail space for every single one of its inhabitants, six times the level of China. But Western retailers also missed a big trick. Their customers, big data. Retailers historically had very little data about their individual customers. They used to have store credit cards, that was about it. But the online companies had huge amounts, collected huge amounts of data about their customers. When you consider that against the, uh, the, what the retailers had, the retailers and traditional brands were really flying blind. And that is why the internet companies have beaten the incumbent retailers and brands for the most part over the last 20 years. The pandemic was a death knell for many brands. 8,700 stores were closed by big chain retailers in America in 2020. But the companies that did harness the power of their consumers' data are thriving. Amazon exceeded $100 billion in quarterly sales for the first time ever in the last three months of 2020. Amazon, of course, wrote the book on, on, on individual customer data and its uses. And of course, as they've got bigger and bigger and bigger, they've got more data than anybody else. With its established logistical system and smooth purchasing process, Amazon may seem a useful online platform for brands to peddle their wares. But though Amazon passes on the sale to the brand, it doesn't pass on much of the customer's data, which means companies know very little about who is buying their products. So some brands are cutting the Amazon cord to focus on what's known as direct-to-consumer selling, such as Nike. It decided to sell only online via the Nike website. Um, and uh, what it did then was it developed ways of keeping much closer tabs on its customers. For example, um, a membership program. Nike's loyalty scheme allows it to create customer profiles of its 250 million members, 70 million of whom joined during the <laughs> pandemic. Nike's apps offer the customer a personalized experience in return for a detailed insight into their behavior. If you sign up to their app, uh, you'll give them information about how much you run every day, what sports clubs you're doing, how much yoga you're doing, all that sort of stuff. And this helps inform Nike about what to produce. They're able to see where you are, and that also informs the way they think about where to put their stores. Nike's apps let users customize their own shoes and in doing so learn the customer's favorite colors and designs. And by tracking how far they run, can even let the customer know when it's time to splash out on a new pair of shoes. You're sharing your data and your intimacy with Nike. 
it all basically creates a more intimate bond between Nike and its customers. As shopping shifted online, the pandemic sparked a greater need for this type of direct-to-consumer selling. Enter Shopify, an e-commerce platform which allows anyone to set up their own online store. The number of new stores set up in the first six weeks of the pandemic grew by more than 60% compared to the previous six weeks. We saw Heinz catch up within, I think, a week or two of COVID hitting, setting up a store on Shopify to sell Heinz at home in the UK. We saw Lindt chocolate go direct to consumer for the first time. Inspired by the Chinese model, Shopify aims to create an ecosystem which integrates e-commerce with social media. Is what we're trying to do is simplify all of it. We just want to make it an easy thing to do to have one centralized inventory and figure out which products should get pushed where. And if you're seeing traffic at your online store coming from Pinterest, we're going to tell you, you should activate the Pinterest channel and you should push product directly to Pinterest to better engage with that audience. But I think we're, we're just at the early stages of social commerce and I think people are beginning to understand that there's a real opportunity here, not just to meet new brands, connect with new brands, but also to buy from those brands. By being better connected to their customers, brands can work out not just what they want to buy, but where they want to shop. ¿Cómo crear una fuente de ingresos que no esté atada a los vaivenes de la economía? Este 31 de mayo, el equipo de Robert Quillos. Take one of Shopify's merchants, the shoe company Allbirds. During the pandemic, when many brands were shutting up shop, Allbirds was opening stores. You hear terms like, well, offline and online are competing and online is hurting offline. You would never hear that from Allbirds because at the end of the day, what they're trying to do is create a great experience, build a great brand and sell you great shoes. And however you purchase, whatever means or channels you utilize to do so, they're happy with. All those kind of feed into each other. The future of retail is retail everywhere. If you want to sell to my mom, you got to have a great brick and mortar experience because my mother prefers to buy that way. But my sister, who's in her early 20s, she is looking to purchase things on Instagram. It means the store isn't dead. It would just be reimagined to provide an entirely new type of experience. They're great for providing what we call brand theatre. They're great for providing a live experience uh, with the customer and to have expert um, sort of uh, stylist level staff who can really help the customer uh, in a way that the internet cannot. Nike has adapted its stores to create a bespoke service for the customer thanks to the information on their digital profile. And the store presents yet another channel to capture their data. In the midst of the pandemic, it opened a huge store in Paris. You go in and immediately it offers you interactive experiences. It's mingling both online and offline data. And the whole point is to make the experience of shopping at Nike more intimate, more direct, and more kind of one-to-one. -one. In-store data can also help inform stock control, ensuring less waste in the supply chain, improving sustainability, as well as profit margins. According to one recent estimate, the volume of data collected globally is expected to increase from 33 trillion gigabytes in 2018 to 175 trillion by 2025. This will be accompanied by rising concerns about privacy and exploitation of personal data. It used to be the case that customers had to exhibit their loyalty to the store that they bought from. These days, it's the retailer that has to prove their loyalty to the shopper. And that loyalty really means looking after their data. Retailers will know increasing amounts about customers' behavior, habits, and preferences. This may sit uncomfortably with some, but one thing is for sure, the inevitability that this retail revolution will be driven by your data. I'm Henry Tricks. I write the Schumpeter column at The Economist. You can read my special report on the future of shopping uh, uh, on the link opposite. Please don't forget to subscribe and thanks for watching. Okay, so it was a very good experience because now we compare the English from the United States, that was the first video, and the English from England, that is the second video. Which one is easier or which one is 
easy to understand. What do you think? Okay, teacher. Uh, I understand, teacher, uh, the second video okay. uh, is a presentation of a, a barrier, a product from various companies and how to sell customer online. Very good. Actually, it's yeah. about that one, about how companies they do businesses online, right? Yeah. Good, good. Any other? What's that video? It's very long. Really it's a kind of long, yeah. <laughs> and what did you I understand? Mean, yes, I understand like, like e-commerce is, is not, is, it's not new. I have uh, many years, but the pandemic make, um, ¿cómo se dice impulsar? Push. Okay, sorry. Push the, push the activity and, and make the, the many companies use more the technology. Y no sé cómo se dice reinventar su manera de venta. No sé cómo se dice eso. They reinvented. They reinvented the mode sales. Actually, that is a very important thing that happens in the video. Yes, that, I mean, when the pandemic came, a lot of businesses closed, but there were some other businesses that they had the best year, right? So that happens. Opportunities are there. So that depends I on I see me. them. Yes, I see the people young prefer see or buy uh, this way. If you ask me, I like go to the store. That is true. Um, I mean, me too. I prefer to go to the physical store and check everything. But that is true also that younger people, they don't like to go shopping. They prefer to, I mean, they want to buy something right now. They go online. You know, everything is changing. I see, for example, that, for example, for me, I really like, I really enjoy to watch TV a lot, movies, TV shows and things like that. Uh, but my son, he doesn't like to do that one. I mean, he, he watches YouTube, he watches some other things, but he doesn't watch his movies anymore. So in the future, that might be changing as well. The way that we entertain ourselves and the way mm -hmm. that we show shop things so it's going to be totally different uh, yeah in the it first was... i see i see problems with the space in the first yeah that is true very good anybody was going to say something else mm -hmm. yes but it was very interesting teacher that through pandemic we have changed in all sense because the new generation for them is, in my opinion, easier to, to adapt. And the, the manage on the all uh, related to the, the websites in the search is, is more comfortab comfortable for the new generation. But uh, for the other generation, <laughs> the, uh, we we need to to adapt. Um, if for the the way for to do business, shame completely, completely, because um, now it's incredible. For example, the the um, do you say, um, in my opinion, I, I am impacting uh, um, related to the podcast, related to the, the, the how the, there are different ways to present the product for the market. And 
the impact for the followers, uh, how the indicator to relate it to the publicity for the uh, for the different product and the innovation. It, it was very important because the big company uh, required a uh, it was necessary to, to improve, to improve the way, the, the way to close with the client, with the cut, with the marker, and they give a, a how do you say, they give a good response, response. Exactly, a good the response. Need, mm -hmm. for, for the needs, the, the customers. It was very interesting. In, in all sense, teacher, in all sense, in my opinion, pandemic, the, the good thing is uh, we, we were the, oh, we were obligados. We, we were forced. We were, yes, we were forced to adapt the new, ways to do everything. Very true. That is actually very true. And yeah, it's interesting how this little, I mean, the pandemic was a, a big problem. A lot of people died and many things happened, but we needed to adapt ourselves. You are very true on that one. So not only we, the people, not only the young, but also the companies, they have to to change things so they can continue. If they did not adapt very well, they died. There were companies that they closed forever. And there were some companies that they saw the opportunity and they are now growing and growing. So it's very interesting. Any other? There was, there was a lot of information in that video teacher. Also, yeah. They start mention the in the 16th century about the the process for shopping something or 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 producing something and and it's in that way we for all the world uh, have the factories the warehouse the production it was very interesting um. Oh, and they say that they mentioned that the fast food growth when the, when the internet came along. It's right. true. Also in the pandemic, the fast food or the delivery service with the food. But for the first instance, I think, because then appears all the, all the business. And they mentioned something that, oh, they, they show us the, the Chinese girl that she's an influencer. And she, in that way, in the streamer line, she, she do, she make a, a business, a beauty, beauty products. Oh, they have many, influence I thousands of influencers they mention they sell lipsticks and many things in 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 this in these years in these days nowadays uh, all is about in that way if you see that something so, so, uh, if someone is using a dress, a lipstick, a hair color. I knew that. I want it. And you look the 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 way or the banner to obtain the, the things. Um, something that I like and I say it's real was the Nike app. Can I took a picture of my feet and it uh, calculate the size of my shoes. My God, it's, it's, it's not, it's something not. I say, what? <laughs> it's very nice. I'm going to look at this up in my phone <laughs> to know that it's true. 
it was amazing teacher and they mentioned that the, the apple the night uh, knows when you are uh, doing yoga if when are, when are you doing exercise oh my god there are very there are many uh, many ways to to oh my god the internet also the social media are uh, uh, it's amazing they mentioned that they mentioned that nike have during during the pandemic obtained oh, i don't know 70 millions yeah. 70 millions of new followers <gasps> imagine 70 million oh my god no that's crazy yeah um wait they mentioned another part of i understand that shopify was inspired by the chinese model mm -hmm. yeah yeah was inspired by the chinese model oh, they mentioned the three the three little market in china alibaba jd.com and pindodo pindodo Though, yeah. yeah there are many there are um, paypal is a platform to to pay okay in that in that moment in in there are many many platforms but it's very nice mm -hmm. very good perfect nice yes actually a lot of information but you were very good into that one you got a lot of things good um any other person from the teacher mm -hmm. and the pandemic and the challenge of everything. <laughs> that is true. Yeah, the pandemic yeah, uh, impacted one. And, and for example, uh, I had our friends um, who dread the pandemic and started the, the purchase in online. And he has a car workshop and he buy day in the union stay and the reply then uh, here and they also buy uh, accessory and and uh, accessory at the and me that he has a lot of uh, a profit my friend is good experience no. For but yes, for 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 he is a a recommendance. Uh, in my case, I I had not money. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, yes. Yeah, yeah, but that happens if you have a good idea and you have the opportunity. I mean, sometimes. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that for change. example, for example, teacher in my company, and uh, I had sell. Excuse me, I say a uh, lotion, a shield, a uh, uh, pants, and shoes. <laughs> Very good. Yeah, yeah actually, yes. yeah, there are many opportunities that you can take advantage, and you're right. The pandemic changed many, many things, and now uh, the world is moving in a different direction. Perfect. Good. Anybody else's? Okay, so there were two things that I really liked about this one. Uh, as I was telling you at the beginning, you can compare. In the first video, you can listen to the American speaking very fast, right? And very, in the English people, they speak a little bit slower, but also the accent is totally different. There are words that are different, even when they're talking about the same. For example, in, in, uh, in the United States, you say apartment, and in, the, in England, you say the lift, right? So, is, is totally different. And if you don't get that one, depending where, where are your plans, where to go, it's going to be totally different. So another thing that I liked is that they say that, I mean, the, the biggest e-commerce country in the world actually is China. They are dominating the world, the world of online shopping. I mean, there are thousands of products. You know, I have the application of uh, AliExpress, I mean, I, I have in my cart like 90 things that I want to buy. Of course, I don't buy all of those, right? But sometimes I buy things. Sometimes I buy two, three things. But there are a lot of things that you can buy then, things that you are not going to find here in El Salvador 
or here in Latin America. So they are very smart, not only to create a platform, but also to create an easy way for you to purchase and things that are very attractive. Those are very good. And the other thing that I really liked uh, also was what Rose was saying about Nike. I mean, they changed the way they do business. In the United States, they don't have physical stores anymore. They closed everything and they shop. I mean, they, they sell only online and they have the application where you can do your exercise, you can share pictures and people can follow you. I mean, and imagine what you can do there. You can take a picture of your feet and create your own shoes the way that you like with the colors that you like. I mean, that is amazing. Of course, it's very expensive, but you can create your own shoes. I mean, that where they are going to be Nike and don't, nobody else in the world have that pair of shoes. I mean, that is, that is the next level of, of shopping online. Something that is personalized that way. Something that is going to be for you only. So that is the future, I guess. Very good. So we're going to continue with the book. I know that you really want to go to the book. So this is unit two, e-shopping issues. And it says, I will be able to identify issues and tips related to hidden charges and delivery issues when shopping online. And then the number one, it says, how often do you buy products online? Do you know, do you remember? I, well, before I used to shop a lot of online. Now, the problem is that I have a lot of things and <laughs> I don't want to spend more money. I have a lot of clothes and a lot of, and sometimes I don't use them. So I stop that one, that madness. But sometimes it's a good idea to shop, right? Sometimes it's good. So do you shop online very often? Once a week, once a month? What do you think? What can you say? I, fre I frequency the, I buy in on online is frequency for me. Very frequently. Where do you usually buy? Uh, stores for example, um, uh, medicine, medicine is correct. Um, uh, yesterday, uh, for example, yesterday I buy a cake, a bam bam online. Um, I buy uh, sometimes my supermarket online too. Mm. I I buy uh, ten or eight uh, twice. Twice, huh? For months, maybe it's or more. For example, two uh, pizza hut. Mm. In yeah. Alibaba too. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I I I, I buy um uh, and, and pay too uh, online. I yeah, use for, for I the... use much uh my bank online. Electronic bank, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, very good. Yeah, yeah. Actually, I believe that you touched something that is very important. I mean, I guess in El Salvador. What we buy more online is food, right? Food is like once or once a week, maybe we buy online or two times a month. You say, I'm not going to cook. I'm going to ask for something. And the good thing is that you can look a lot of options, right? You can purchase even popsicles. Uh, I don't know, uh, ice cream. You can purchase- In general, teacher? There are more promotions in online stores. Yes. The, For example, uh, La Curacao is very, very nice offering online. Very true. So they are trying to push you, right? To push you to do online uh, because it's, it's a trend. Uh, and as you say, maybe, I mean, we are enjoying that one. Imagine the new generations that they don't want to go out. It's going to be the paradise just to go online and shop and that's it, right? Good, we're going to do this conversation. I'm going to read, it says, Alan is reporting some questions the customer who's visiting the website is asking. Read the conversation to find out the answers, Maria suggests. 
take turns practicing the conversation with the partner. So I'm gonna read and you check the pronunciation, my friends. There's this customer in the online store asking a lot of questions about the decorative pillows. What will be, you know, what will the customer like to know about the product? Well, the customer asked if the shipping was for free. And then this same person posted a different question. They asked <laughs> whether the pillows were made in China or America. And finally, the customer asked if we have a return policy. Let the customer know that international shipping has an extra cost and tell them the pillows were made in China. And please post a link in the comments to their return policy document. So, do you have any question on pronunciation? What do you pronounce as? Ask. Asked. Asked. Yeah, like asked. a T? Like a T, huh? Mm, asked. Actually, I have a video here. This video is about ED pronunciation, but I, I we don't have time today. It's going to be okay. for tomorrow. Asked. But tomorrow, if you want to practice how to pronounce ED, tomorrow is going to be the day. We have to be very dramatic to, to pronounce asked. So, uh, sometimes that yeah. happens. You remember that English is a different language. That's the way. That's the way the coach in the in the games uh, uh, covered uh, the, his mouth because they they uh, say something and maybe the the opposite yeah. <laughs> is going to know. <laughs> yeah, they understand. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, any other question on pronunciation? Teacher, in the first paragraph, the pronunciation of is pillows or pillow or pillow? Pillows. Oh, pillows, thank you, teacher. Pillows, yeah. Good. Any other question on pronunciation? I guess this has no, not not many words that are difficult. So let's practice. Rose and Anna sell me. Rose, are you Alan? Okay, I'm Alan. Okay, let's start. <clears throat> There's the, there this customer in the online store asking a lot of questions about the decorative pillows. What would the customer like to know about the product? Well, the customer asked if the shipping was, was for free, and then this same person posed a different question. They asked whether the pillow were made in China or America. And finally, the customer asked if we have a return policy. Let the customer know that international shipping has an extra cost and tell them the pillows were made in China. And please post our link in the comments to the re to the return policy document. Very good, perfect. Now, Wendy and Osmin. Okay, Mr. you, Wendy, please. Okay, there is there this customer in the online store asking a lot of questions about the decorative pillows. What do the customer like to know about the product? Well, the customer asked if the shipping was for free. And then the same person posted a different question. They asked they ask whether the pillow were made in China. China. Or America, made, in, made in China? China? China, China yeah. China, okay. okay. Or America. And finally, the customer asked if we have the, a return policy. Let the customer know that international shopping has a extra cost and tell them the, the pillow were made in China. And please post a link in the comments to the return policy document. Very good, perfect. Now, Walter and Ophelia. 
Ok, sí, sí. Yo estaba sí, sola. Mejor sí. Yes. Okay. I is a customer in the online store. Excuse, okay. I love question. I bus I the decorative pillows. What will the customer like to know about the product? I will. I the customer excuse. A card is the shipping. I wait for fees and days. This summer person, a person, a different question. I this a case. I wear them. I did Felix. I was made in China or America in Finland. I the customer ask is I will has a restaurant policy. Let like the customer now want international, keeping up extra cost, and tell them the pillows were my China. And please post a uh, like in the comments to return police document. Very well, thank you. Carla and Guadalupe. Okay, me, Alan. Uh, it is this customer in the online store asking a lot of questions about the decorative pillow. What would the customer like know about the product? Well, the customer asked the shipping was for free and then this same person posted a different question. They asked where the pillows were made in China or America. And finally, the customer asked if we have a return police. Let the customer now know the international shipping has an extra cost and tell them the pillow were made in China. And please post a link in the comment to return police document. Very good, nice. Now Wilfredo and Jasmine. Okay. Uh, I am going to start. Um, there's there's this customer in the online store asking a lot of questions about the decor decorative pillow. What will the customer like to know about the product? Well, the customer asked if the shipping was for free, and then the same person post a different question. They ask whether the pillows were made in China or America. And finally, the customer asks if we have a return police. Policy. Let the customer know that international shipping has an extra cost and tell them the pilots were made in China. And please post a link in the comments to the return policy document. Okay, very good. Now, Sandra, Romero, and Pamela. Which one, teacher? I'm sorry. Uh, you can be Alan and Pamela. Are you there? Yeah. yeah. Okay. I'm going to be Alan. Okay. There's this customer in the online store asking a lot of questions about the decorative pillows. What will the customer like to know about the product? Well, the customer asked if the shipping was for free, and thus the same person posted a different question. They asked whether the pillows were made in China or America. And finally, the customer asked if we have a return policy. Let the customer know that international shipping has an extra cost, and they then the pilots were made in China, and please post a link in the comments to the return policy document. Very well. Now, Adriana and Zulma. Okay. Uh, me start. Okay. okay. There's this customer in the online store asking a lot of questions about the decorative pillows. 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 Thank you, teacher. Pillows. What would the customer like to know about the product? 
Well, the customer asked if the shipping was for free and then the same person posted a different question. They asked whether the pile? pillows. pillows, pillows. Pillows were made in China or America. And finally, the customer asked if we have a return police, police. policy. Policy. <laughs> Thank you. Let the customer know that international shipping has an extra cost and tell them the pillow were made in China, China. And please post a link in the comment to the return policy document. Very good. Now, Gloria and Lourdes. Okay. I am Lourdes. Okay. okay. There this customer is online store. Asking a lot of questions about the decorative pillow. What will the customer like to know about the product? Well, the customer asked if the shipping were for free, and then the same person posted a different question. They asked uh, whether the pillows were made in China or America. And finally, the customer asked if we have a return police. Policy. Policy. Mm. Let, let the customer know the international shipping has, a, has an extra cost and tell them the pillows were made in China and please post a link in the comments to the return policy document. Very well. Now, Nelson and Susana. Okay. Nelson, just start? Yeah. Okay. There is, there is this customer in the online store asking a lot of questions about the quality of pilot. Mm -hmm. What would the customers like to know? I'm sorry. Well, the customer asking if, if the shipping was before free and then the same person posted a different question. They asked whether the pillow were made in China or America. And finally, the customer asked if, have, if, if we have a return policy. Let the customer know that the international shipping has an extra cost and tell them the pilots were made in China. And please post a link in the comments to the return policy document. Very well, perfect. Now, Ricardo and Jose Ernesto. Okay. The, their, the, this customer in their online store asking a lot of questions about the decorative pillow. Pillow. <laughs> Pillows, yeah. What would the customers like to know about the product? Will the customer ask if uh, the shipping was for free and the uh, same person posed a different question? They asked where they fired, where Monday in China of America. And finally, the quest customer asked uh, if we have a return policy. Let the customer know that international shipping has an extra cost and tell them the pillows were made in China. China. And please post, I think it is, I got it, made in China. And please post a link in the comments to the return policy document. Very well, perfect. Thank you. Uh, so I guess everybody did it. Uh, Michelle and Mayra, I guess it's not possible, right? In either floor. Okay, so we're going to check some uh, some things. Let's see, on pronunciation, let's take a, um, be careful on pillows. This is pillows. Uh, do you know what is pillows? What is that? 
the place when we put your head. Very good. <laughs> <To take. laughs> Picture is the similar the market, not. Which market? Market, the pencil. No, no. no. Ah, that, that is pilot. <laughs> pilot. That's why, that's why the pronunciation is very important in English because imagine that you say, I, I need a pilot. So I, I will say, Mark. okay. Uh -huh. And that was some pillows. I mean, uh -huh. um, important part of bed. Yeah, yeah. it's very it's important. important. Yeah, very good. So pillows is that soft thing that you put your hand on. So the other one, let's see. Uh, there is no other, I guess. Pillows, customer. No, this one is kind of very easy. Uh, China, remember the pronunciation is China. And there are no other, I guess. It was a very good one. Okay. Weather, so, teacher. Uh, weather, yeah. Weather, weather, the pillows, huh? Weather. Weather. Yeah, weather. Okay, okay weather. so number, uh, the exercise says read the conversation again and rewrite. The questions are shown in the conversation. So, is the shipping for free? How is going to be that one? Here is it. No, it's not free. It not, it's not free. Uh, but remember that what we're going to do is to rewrite the question. So according to the, to this one, actually it's there. You don't need to rewrite, you just need to, to look in the conversation for that one. So it's a report speech. But the question are for the report speech. Exactly. Uh, okay. <laughs> okay, the... Um... But the customer asked. Exactly, the customer asked. Uh -huh. As... Actually, it's this part. Yes, the customer asked. The whether or if is right. Yeah, if, if is fine. I mean, that's fine. If the shipping oh. is for free. It, uh, what? Was, for, was for free. Exactly. So this one is going to be this one. So the customer asked if this shipping was free. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yeah, the answer I is complicated actually, right? my life. <laughs> <laughs> no, but what's really good? That's nice. So number two says, are the pillows made in China or America? So it's how is going to be the reporter speech question? Uh -huh. Hello. Hello. How are you? <laughs> so how is going to be the number two, the report is speech question. They, they asked no. Yeah, uh -huh. they asked. Uh -huh. They asked uh, where, no, no. Huh, whether. Whether. Uh huh. They asked whether the pillow made in China or America. Very good. That is it. Good job, Osmi. They asked whether the pillows were made in China or America. And the last one says, "Do you have a return policy?" So how is going to be that question? The customer asked if mm -hmm. we had a return policy. Very good. If we had a return policy, very nice. You see, it's very, very hard, easy. Okay. Hard change, hard. It's past. Yeah. It's past. Good. Okay, my friends. So, do you have any questions about the class of today before we finish? No questions. The good thing is that we're going to put our heads in the pillow right now. So um, we're going to check the attendance and then we finish, of course. Uh, Osmin, for you is the one one today. Okay, teacher, I am ready. Good. And tomorrow, teacher? Tomorrow is for Pamela. Okay, thank you. 
Good. So, Ada Patricia Linares Galdamez. Adriana Stephanie Martinez Flores. Present. Good. Ana Selmi Chévez. Present, teacher. Good. Carmen Jasmine López Martínez. Present. Good. Gloria Elizabeth Linares Galdames. Here. Good. Guadalupe del Carmen López Flores. Present, teacher. Good. José Ernesto Osorio Morán. Present, teacher. Good. Carla Verónica Vázquez de Rivas. Present, teacher. Good. Lourdes Beatriz Iraeta de Miranda. Good evening, teacher. Hey, good night. Ofelia good night, Orellana. Good night. Here, teacher. Good. Me gustó, papá. Oh, okay, that's good. Osmin Baile Solorzano. Present, teacher. Good. Pamela Beatriz, esposa de Reina. Present. Good. Rosa Elena Salgado de Serrano. Present, teacher. Good. Sandra Carolina Romero Ramírez. Here, teacher. Good. Sandra Gladys Méndez Ramírez. Susana Carolina Hernández Iraeta. Present, teacher. Good. Walter Mauricio Morales Araujo. Present. Good. Wendy Patricia Molina Duarte. Wilfredo Guardado Rivera. Present, teacher. Good. Zulma Rosaura López García. Present. Good. Ricardo Alexis Fuentes Rodríguez. Present, teacher. Good. Flor de María Carballo Ugarte. Present. Good. Nelson Present. Edgardo Sánchez Ramírez. Present, teacher. Good. Ana Michelle Guevara Sánchez. Present. Good. Mayra Melanie Guevara de Beltrán. Present. Very well. Okay, my friends, it was a pleasure to be with you tonight. I hope you have a, fa a fantastic night. Rest very well. See you tomorrow and dream in English. See you tomorrow. Good night, buddy. Okay, good night. See you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Okay, hello, Osmin, how are you? Hello, teacher. Uh, I am uh, very well in my house. Very nice, ready to go to bed, that's nice. <laughs> yes. Okay, uh, so the first question, uh, you have experience on this one. The first question is, how do you feel that you are learning English? Do you feel that you are moving on? Uh, uh, I, I, I are good. Yeah, because I I learn more uh, each day in 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 each class I learn uh, new words new uh, formula for uh, expression for us yes expression yeah. Very good, perfect. So now, do you have any question about any topic or the platform or anything? Uh, yes, uh, I have many questions because okay. for the time is little, is little. Uh, uh, the question more important for me is uh, the the report speech for me is difficult. Uh, more, very difficult. Yeah, actually that is advanced grammar. So that is, is, is a little bit difficult because you need to change things. And when you're speaking, sometimes we forget, right? So, but let me ask you, do you understand the rules? Okay. Uh, yeah, yes. Uh, no, exactly. But I understand the, the more important. Okay, so I guess then uh, what you need to, to do is to practice, right? Yeah, yes, yeah, exactly. I need practice. 
Yeah, yeah. Sometimes that happens. Most, mostly in this kind of grammar that is kind of advanced. Uh, sometimes we understand the rules as uh, we were discussing. But sometimes when we're speaking, we we forget things and we do things in different ways. So we can practice right now if you want. So for example, uh, if I tell you something and you can change into reported speech, we can practice that way. I can say something, for example, Norma says, where is, where is my cell phone? So how do you change that into reported speech? Uh. Norm, Norma uh, asked me, no. Very good, Norma asked me. Uh, where is, no, what, what, what is my cell phone, no. Very close. So in that case mm -hmm. is Norma asked where her cell phone was. Um, so yeah. remember that for the information question, that is WH questions. For example, she says, where is my cell phone? So the first part is good. She asked me. So we're going to start with where, that is the information word. And then the subject, her cell phone. And then we're going to put the verb, but in the past tense. I mean, because it's present, right? So we're going to switch back the tense. So in that case, it's going to be Norma asked me where her cell phone was. Yeah, where her hair is so yeah. Or, or yeah. Your, it's possible. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So it's not where is I mean imagine that Norma comes and says, Where is my cell phone? But Norma is speaking, right? So when yeah. you say something like that, it's where is her cell phone? Right. Uh, in this case, I repeat. Uh, the uh, normal side. Exactly. So that's yeah. why it's reported speech. But we're talking about her cell phone, not your cell phone, right? It's going oh, to be exactly. where her cell phone was. So that is. Uh, yeah, yes. It, 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 I, I see the teacher, uh, the grammar is funny. No, 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 it's saying the grammar in English. This is the problem because I, I think words in Spanish, I think word in, in English is different, total different. You have the point there. That is, that is the truth. That for us is difficult because in Spanish is different, right? And we want to say that as in Spanish, but in English. But it should be different because the rules in English are, are different. So it's that different. is... Yeah. Is it the problem? Yeah. Is it the problem? Yeah, that is actually the problem. And then we need practice. The problem is that, as you say at the beginning, um, we don't have much time, right? We need to move on. And sometimes that kind of grammar, we need to practice more and more and more until everything is clear. The problem is that two hours are not enough. But you know what I'm going to do? Um, I'm going to help you. Uh, tomorrow to the group, I'm going to send some, some exercises online so you can practice. That is a very good thing. So if you practice and practice and practice at the end, you are going to be better on that one. Yeah, exactly. You have reason. The practice is, is, is important for the learn in every work. In everything. Yeah, that is true. Very good. So tomorrow I'm going to send that so you can practice a little bit more. So uh, by now, is there any other question? Anything else? Uh, you Could you... Uh, other example of a first teacher? Of course, we can do one more. Uh, in mind that uh, Carlos said, um, okay. my it's house me. is big. My house is big, okay. Mm -hmm. It's hard. This say Carlos. Uh, okay, Carlos said. When, mm -hmm. uh, when, I, when I speak the mm -hmm. Carlos say, is the chain, the uh, uh, report speech. Yeah. In, in this case, I think uh, you, you please me, uh, is good or, or bad. Okay. Car Carlos uh, asked me, mm -hmm. my house is big. Okay. 
So in this case, it's not ask me because it's not a question. It's going to be Carlos said. Okay. Yeah. Carlos said. And after that one. Uh, the, the, here is the, his, his house. His no. house, uh -huh. his house. Uh, his, his house is here. But not his. Remember that we're going to change yeah, the yeah. verb. Uh -huh. Yeah, exactly. Uh -huh. His, uh, his how big only, no. Was big. Ah, was big in the past, okay. Yeah, that is it. So those are yeah. the little details, uh-huh. Yeah, this is the formula, exactly. Exactly, that is it. So yeah, it's, uh, it's a matter for you to practice. As I was telling you, tomorrow yeah, yeah. I'm going to send many exercises in the group so you can practice into that. Okay, teacher. Perfect, I mean, it was a pleasure then to be tonight with you. If you have questions, remember that you can chat with me directly or chat in the group, or you can ask questions in the class. Okay, teacher, thank you. Uh, it was a pleasure. Teacher. Have a good night. Blessings. Okay, teacher. Good night. Good night.